So, entities. <laughs> entities are basically the last thing we need to make before this game comes to life. Entities has its own package. Uh, entities is a thing in the game. So, say you're playing Mario. Mario is an entity. The Goombas are entities. The coins are entities. The bricks are entities. They're all entities. They're all things that are there. Alright? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we're gonna make an abstract class entity. There's a few things that every entity is going to have Entity oh Whoops, we need to make a new package first to uh, organize all these entities Entities We're gonna make a new class It's gonna be called entity and it's abstract with no constructor because we want to have all of our entities have their own constructors but they will have a protected void in it initializing method protected abstract void they will have rectangles protected tag did wow protected rectangle control shift m make sure you select gdx's rectangle bounds so bounds is the boundary of the object so say we pong is made up of squares so it's a perfect example of how a rectangle is uh the the rectangle has an x and a y, a width and a height, and it can tell you if that rectangle is touching another rectangle. So it's used for physics. Uh, so yes, in this video you're going to need trigonometry, but that is soon, but not yet, because we have to set up our entity class first. Public abstract void draw, just like our game state and our game in our game state. Gonna take a shape renderer and a sprite batch. SB. Now, um, as I said, we're not gonna have a sprite batch in this game. Well, a sprite batch in the entities at least, but uh, it is good now. So we're gonna do public boolean colliding with entity e all right and it's going to return this uh let's uh before we do this just going to control 7 it you can just leave it source generate getters and setters bounds after okay get bound, set bounds. We want this after our colliding with. Alright, control 7 net. This dot get bounds. I'm sorry for my uh my loud neighbors dog. If you can hear that I I might not do that. So E dot get bounds. So what's going on is it's this overlaps just makes tells you if the uh the rectangle is touching another rectangle so it's taking the bounds of this rectangle uh, of this entity and checking if it's colliding with the bounds of another entity that you give it because there will be multiple entities we're gonna have a public now we're gonna get some information out of this rectangle so public float the rest of this class is just getters and setters getters and setters for days so public float get x return bounds bounds dot x public void set x return bounds dot or no this dot x uh, bounds dot x equals x float x public void or public float 
at y return bounds dot y now of course none of these will work if uh, in all our constructors we don't do um, new rectangle so float y bounds dot y equals y public void we're getting float get width return bounds dot width public void set width float width so hold on let me just tell you something real quick I am going to skip these vector twos. Just ignore them if you're looking at the code there. So set width bounds dot width equals width. And finally our height public float get height uh, return bounds dot height and public void set height float height bounds dot height equals height alright we're gonna close everything except for play state and entity now now we can't make an instance of entity because it's an abstract class so let's go ahead and make our ball uh, our ball is what we're going to need uh, the trig for, just by the way. Um, so go ahead and make a new class, call it ball, and go to super class and go to entity, entity, so Make sure it's our entities, so com sshsgd.pong.entities. Um, getting a phone call or a text message. Oh. So uh, make sure you have constructors because Ball will have a constructor. It's going to actually have an overloaded constructor at that too, so. Um, so we have our ball. So we're gonna, it's gonna have a uh, radians, which is the uh, the angle that it's pointing at. So private float speed and radians. All right. So private floor float private vector two. Vel for velocity and private vector to spawn. So whenever you reset the ball, where it will spawn. Vector to spawn. All right. So now we're going to make some constants. We're going to make a bounce mode. So the ball is either going to bounce on the top and the bottom and then go off the edge, or it's going to bounce on the top, bottom, uh, and uh, and the edge so bounce off the edge as well because in our title screen I have a little ball in the background of the text just bouncing around minding its business so public static final int bounce top bottom equals zero and public static final int bounce all sides equals one and then we're gonna make a pub private private int bounce mode all right so we're gonna make a uh, we're gonna make a constructor uh, we already have our constructor and it's gonna be 
float our vector two position. So where it's gonna first start, float width. So the width and height. I always try to make it as customizable as possible, so in case I want to mess with it. Bounce mode. Alright. And we're going to do bounds equals new rectangle. So this is all stuff that you can't do in the simple init uh, thing. Position, position, dot x, position dot y. So when you do a new rectangle, you give it the x and the y, and then the width and the height. I don't know why, but everything in libgdx just uses a um, floats instead of doubles. So you want the gdx rectangle. Forget. And spawn equals new vector2 position. All right, and this dot bounce mode equals bounce mode in it. So we're gonna make a reset method. So public void reset, and then we're also gonna go into source generate getters and setters for spawn. Or let me see what other getters do I have. No, that's it. So get spawn after reset. So we have get spawn and set spawn. So in reset, uh, it's gonna do game dot res dot dot get sound. It's gonna do uh peep. So stupid. Dot play. So it's gonna do a little sound. Speed equals ten. So it's always gonna move ten units. So I have a do while here because sometimes the ball generates a random angle that is not good. It moves too fast. Dot a b at absolute value of math utils. Math utils is what you will be using for your math in libgdx because it's an all in floats. Cosine of radians times speed is less than 1.5 f. You'll see why in a second. I'll explain to you the math. So radians, we're going to use radians and not degrees. Just know that uh, 360 degrees in is degrees, and in uh, radians that would be two times pi. Because uh, so we're gonna do random float range. So math utils dot pi times two because pi pi radians is 180 degrees. And uh, so uh, 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. So first we're going to set the velocity to 0, 0, just to make sure in case our velocity was something previously. So now we're do bounds dot x equals spawn dot x and bounds dot y equals spawn dot y val dot x equals math utils dot cosine of radians times the speed and val dot y is equal to math utils dot sine of radians times speed so let me explain the math I'm gonna open up notepad plus plus so uh, if you don't know what trigonometry is uh, trigonometry is using uh, properties of right triangles to get their well using like one property of a right triangle to get its thing so if you know Pythagorean's theorem you have you have well 
a squared I can just type this out a I'm gonna do a space space plus b space space plus is equal to c space space I'm gonna do squared here a squared plus b squared equals c squared right on a right triangle so say you have a triangle Let's see if I can make an automatic right triangle where in this right triangle this is A, this is B, and this is C. Alright, so say we have from our point, our reference point, so our reference point starts here so we're just gonna make reference point so this is where the X and the Y position of the ball is and it says say it's going this way it randomly generated and this is speed speed or 10 10 it's not speed times 10 it's just speed which is right now 10 so this is our pair is x plus uh, vel dot x y plus vel dot y or we don't need to know this all right, so to get there, it has to move x velocity this way, right? So that's how it moves its x, and then y velocity uh, this way to make a right triangle. So it's a right triangle, sort of, right now. So uh, our point of reference. So this is if we have at least two of these. But right now we only have one, the hypotenuse. So um, we want to find out. So we have so ka toa. And that is sine is equal to opposite. Oh shoot, I messed up. It's so ka toa. There we go. We have sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, right? Cosine is equal to opposite over hyp or adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Alright, so in this case this is our point of reference. Uh, the opposite, if you draw an arrow going straight out from the point of reference, the opposite will be here, so this is opposite, and this is the adjacent, so the opposite will be in red, the adjacent will be blue and the hypotenuse is always which will be this pinkish color always a slanted line so uh, so we only have an angle and a, a speed so when you do sine you do sine and then you put an angle in there so this angle right here is radians is equal to uh, we don't have an opposite so we have so let's just assign this to x uh, and we're gonna do um, over hypotenuse or speed so to get x you multiply by speed by on both sides to cancel out speed so then you get sine of radians times speed equals x and then this is x this is y so we want so we have so wait a second I did this backwards that should be uh, I'm just gonna get a big 
big brush and just color it over white. So I did it backwards. Because sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we have sine of radians is equal to opposite, which is y over speed, not 7, over speed. And we have sine of radians. This is why I said you needed algebra for this. Speed equals y. And then we have cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse of radians equals x over speed. So cosine of radians over or time speed equals x. So that's our equations. Uh, once you get into geometry, you'll do this basic Sokotoa stuff, and then you get into algebra 2 trig. This will be your life. So, uh, yeah. So that's what we have here, essentially. Vel dot x is cosine of radians times speed, and vel dot y is cosine of radians, is sine of radians times speed. So, it's a little math lesson. How long has this video been? 20 minutes? I can get the ball moving in time. So, we're just going to copy this constructor. But instead of doing a position, it's going to take a float x and a float y, just in case we don't want that. So float x, float y, new vector 2, x, comma, y. And that's our overloaded constructor. All right, and now in our init method, we're going to do vel equals new vector 2, so that it has an instance of vector 2 and reset. Alright, now in our draw method, since this is a shape, we're going to use our shape renderer. So, shape renderer sr.rect uh, bounds or get x get y get width get height. All right, you can get rid of these lines if you want to. I won't. All right, and then in our uh, oh, I didn't make an update method. Oh, because this entity. Hold on, entity. No, there's no update method. No abstract one at least. So public. We're gonna make an update method. So public void update. And we're going to do another two voids. So we're going to make a private void, bounce all sides. So before, as I type this out, and we're going to make a, hold on, private void, bounce, top, bottom. So, um, so the x and the y position of a rectangle is the bottom corner. So that's just something you need to have in mind. The bottom left corner. So bounce all sides. So if get x, all right, is greater than game game dot size dot x. So if the x position is greater than the size of the, or greater than or equal to, than the size of the game of the window, minus get width. So it's so that it's uh, the. Uh, size of the window minus the width so it looks like it's bouncing off of the edge of the thing. We're going to do bounds dot x minus minus. This is just to ensure that it doesn't glitch into the thing. And oh, we need to make our bounce our bounce methods. So before we do any of that, I'm just going to make an empty method. We're going to do public void collisions paddle p don't worry about that. Actually, just get rid of the paddle P because we haven't made the paddle yet. This will we'll call this for every paddle that we have on the screen. So we're gonna have public void bounce x and public void bounce y. 
So we're gonna have our ball go faster when it bounces. So we're gonna have game dot res dot get sound. Uh, when it bounces on the x axis, it's gonna do beep. Uh, what dot play, and then val dot x times equals negative one. So if it's adding. Uh, if it's adding a negative number, it's just subtracting, so it's going to be moving this way. So then it, the velocity needs to be multiplied by negative 1. So it becomes positive, so it starts going this way, and then it becomes negative. So when, if we wanted to get bigger, so whatever it is, the value, so the absolute value of the thing gets bigger. So if vel.x is greater than 0, so if it's positive, vel.x plus plus, and then else so if it's negative val dot x minus minus that will increase the uh, the absolute value of the velocity so game dot res dot get sound plop dot play because it makes a different sound when it bounces off the x and uh, bounces off the y in the original game so I'm kept true to that in uh, this version times equals negative one again so it's pretty much the same thing if vel dot y is greater than zero vel dot y plus plus and else vel dot y minus minus okay so now we can use this bounce x and bounce y methods so bounce bounce x if get x now we don't have to worry about the width here because it's the left corner is less than or equal to zero uh, bounds that means it's over here bounds dot x plus plus so it doesn't get stuck and bounds bounce x all right if get y is less than or equal to zero um, bounds dot y plus plus bounce y so now here if get y is greater than or equal to game dot size dot y minus get height bounds dot y minus minus bounce y so now our bounce top bottom is similar to this so we're just gonna copy this but instead of this this one's gonna be negative 50 by the way because it's flying off the edge instead of doing this it's gonna reset and we're gonna do this minus plus 50 so it's 50 to that on that side, 50 away from it. So reset. All right. So now in our update method, we can make that. If bounce mode is equal equal to ball dot bounce all sides, check if it's bouncing all sides bounce all sides if bounce mode is equal equal to ball dot bounce top bottom bounce top bottom and then we're gonna do bounds dot x plus equals vel dot x so it's just changing the the position of the ball or it's translating it by the velocity which is a vector so everything's done in the ball all we need to do is add collisions with the paddles that we have not created yet so let's go into play state let's make a little test ball so it will be our game ball but uh, I have a ball B but we're just gonna make a different uh, bounce mode uh, into play state. Alright, ball B. 
uh, we want to go control shift M but let's just go to entity just do all even though we don't need the actual class entity so B equals new ball this is in our init method so we're gonna make this game dot center 25 25 so it's gonna be 25 by 25 so ball dot bounce all sides all right and then we're gonna do in our update b dot update and we're gonna do b dot not yet so alright in draw so when we have a sprite batch or a shape renderer you have to call begin sr dot begin and in a shape render you have to tell which type of shape 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 type dot it's a static we want a filled to uh, have our shapes with a filled color and we want to set our projection matrix to Oh, we need to set up a camera. I'm going to control 7 this. We need to set up a camera. The projection matrix tells the game tells the game to draw onto that camera. So to use that camera. So we're going to do sr.setcolor. This sets the color of all of our um of all of our shapes that we're going to be drawing. So we're going to do color.white, which is a constant color. And we're gonna do b dot draw srsb and then sr dot end. So for every time you have to call begin, you call begin, you have to call end before you call begin again. So uh, just know that. So we're gonna set up a my camera as well. So private my cam. This will be our game, our cameras, our games camera. In some games, we're gonna have multiple cameras for like the heads up display and our actual game, say in our side scroller. I'm gonna do cam equals new my camera. It's gonna be the size of the screen. And uh, cam dot translate. So we're gonna move it over to the center of the screen. So we're gonna translate it by the center. So it's gonna move across x center cross y centered so it's at the center and as I said when you move it or change its uh, size you have to update it and, uh, and then in our resize method we're gonna, gonna go ahead and resize our camera cam dot resize uh, size and center and then we're gonna set the spawn to be the uh, the center again so b dot set spawn is going to be um, new vector two uh, width times 0.5f and height or size dot x times 0.5f so size dot y size dot x and we want this to be in the center, so true. We don't want the camera, the camera doesn't move, so it can just go back to the center. And, uh... Let me see, draw... Do we need anything else right now? Nope. Let's go ahead and run it. I don't want there to be echo, so I'm going to turn it down. As you can hear, it's playing our thing and it's getting faster. It's gonna start going crazy fast. And the frame rate's gonna go down because I'm recording. You actually probably can't even see how fast it's going on the thing because it records at 30 frames. Anyway, so we're gonna set this to bounce top bottom. You're gonna see how it uh, how it generates a random angle every single time it plays. Anyway, so that's that. Thanks for watching. Oh, good. I managed to keep this under 40 minutes. It's actually a surprise. 
anyway so yeah oh let me just show you uh, because I set the spawn back to the center uh, it doesn't look all weird and the thing still looks square uh, for the most part square something got messed up something's not calling resize I'm not resize size true. Hold on, I'm gonna debug for a second here. Managers problems probably in here. I'm just gonna do a new vector two width height. So it doesn't. Huh. Ball. Set spawn. How about we. I'm sorry. I need to censor that out. <laughs> What's different in my code from before? So size true, size dot x, size dot y, cam dot resize size. Is there something wrong in the camera's resizing method? Resize this dot update, size dot y, size dot x, if center, this dot update. A mystery. Stop viewport width. Um, I will figure this out off camera because something is obviously not right. Maybe it's Report X, report Y, no. I'm just gonna compare code. Uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> I'll probably, I'll show you what the difference is if I do manage to fix the problem. So bye.